Put your hands together for ACAG hey. Productions. Hey. We're ready. Yeah. We're, hey. We're ready. We're ready. Good afternoon, hey. ACAG hey. Production. Hey. Reaching for the dog hey. on the Just get ready to have a good time. Hey. In the night time. Hey. Are you ready? Mama, sister, brother. Hi, I'm Elder Carly Town with AC Funtime Superstar and the Baby Boomers, and I have my niece Denise here. We're at the Tech Up Step Up. Denise? Hey, Auntie, how are you? Thank you. I'm great. So I am an artist, and I brought my artwork to uh, display it and show everybody. Um, this one here is uh, fiery and ocean. <laughs> This one here I did last night, this is called Unity. It inspired me because of everything that's going on in the world. And I just wanted, we need unity here in this world. And this right here is lava and water mixing together. So I really, really love this kind of artwork. It's abstract artwork and I, it's on display. I, I do sell them. So if you're interested in buying any of my paintings, uh, my Facebook name is Denise Carissa Richardson. I want to thank everybody here at the Step Up Tech Up program. Um, this program really, really inspired me. I advise anybody, anybody is interested, to come out and join us. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. And now we're going to take you to get some honey from Project Love. will be coming out nationally July, so get ready. It's going to be in Walmart. Y'all ready for that? Yeah. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Put those blessed hands. 
hands together for Nikki Smalls. That's a little Stevie Wonder. Mind if I say it again? Listen. I don't know why he loves me. I don't understand why he loves me. I don't know why he loves me. Oh, but he loves me. Hi, this is Elder Carly Town with AC Funtime Superstar and the Baby Boomers, and we have Sister Sunshine here. And Sister Sunshine, tell us a little bit about what you brought today. I bought some candy that I made. I do candy arrangements. I have two here of my selection. They make beautiful centerpieces. This is one, which is butterscotch and cinnamon, red cinnamon candy. And <laughs> this one is peppermint and cinnamon candy. And they are each for a small donation of $15. You can reach me at 843-720-7865 and I'll be glad to make one for you if you need one as a centerpiece or a gift or whatever. Peace. Hi, my name is Shirley Clark. I uh, moved in, this, in Charleston. I've been here about almost four years now and I really fell in love with the area and the culture and um, same things just worked out is beginning to work out well for me and I've been trained at um, SCAD, um, Savannah College of Art and Design but I've been um, painting ever since I was a little girl and I won awards when I was in high school uh, and so forth and uh, God has gifted me in um, portraying people, and I could do it in any medium. I, I, I was blessed to do it in watercolor, oil, um, acrylic. I also know a little bit of um, wood carving. I'm really excited about um, this program that Kali has talked about. 
um, in, in exchanging uh, our, our uh, what we've learned to share with others. And I'm here on um, every second Saturday of the month, and I would be willing, if anyone wants to learn about how to do portrait painting, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be portrait painting. I also know how to do landscapes, even calligraphy. Sometimes you might want to learn how to do sign painting and so forth All right. like that. Uh, I'm willing to share my knowledge to the best of my ability and then help you start off. The main thing is for you to get a foundation. And once you get a foundation, then you can work your own way. And you can actually sell your art because we will market it for you. One of our artists, I'm not calling any names, actually sold a piece of art today at Tech Up Sepa. So come on out, bring your town. We're going to go for some honey and we're going over to Project Love and we got some exciting, exciting entertainment for you. What up to Elder Carly Town uh, over at Tech Up Step Up, you know, who thought it not robbery to send my main man uh, for the authorism, AC Fun Time, as they call him, you know, over here to uh, get with us at City Hall today in this this important event also. Your your event, Elder Carly Town, is definitely important to us, and you know full well that I would have been there if I could have, but unfortunately all of these different situations following the, uh, the death of uh, Walter Scott has drawn me away and into this realm uh, for right now. But I just want to give you a big old shout out to you, Elder Carly. Elder Carly, we love you. Thanks for lend lending us AC Fun Time, and we're good to go. Peace. Yeah. Oh, we shall no overcome. Justice. No peace. No 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 justice. No peace. United we stand. Divided we fall. United we stand. Divided we fall.
We're back here on Sunday night. Um, we first came out here last Wednesday um, in the aftermath of the uh, Walter Scott uh, video that uh, no one knew was uh, available being released on Tuesday. The um, protests and demonstrations began uh, over that, uh, that video and the um, um, what seemed as if uh, law enforcement had was beginning to develop an entirely different scenario, but the expose of the video that clearly showed uh, uh, Officer Michael Slager um, executing uh, Walter Scott um, by shooting him in his back as he fled the scene, um, that spurred um, demonstrations and, uh, and peaceful rallies over the last few days. But now here today, we're back here today, really at the end of the week. This is the same uh, day that um, uh, one week later after the uh, the shooting, and today was the day where they actually buried uh, Walter Scott. And uh, we're back here today, though, at City Hall, um, with their approval also, and in conjunction with working with law enforcement, in order to share um, some solutions and things to the to, to the to this issues that we believe some solutions that we really do believe are going to make the level the playing field for everybody the the minority uh, in the African American community and uh, with the police department working in conjunction with each other. What we did today, though, as opposed to going straight to the officer-involved shooting incidences. We talked about a few areas of violence in general. We dealt with violence around the board. We dealt with domestic violence. We dealt with um, black on black violence. We addressed all of those issues before finally dealing with the reason why we gathered together, which just happened to be an officer involved violence. None of this is acceptable, no matter which way it goes. And unless we root out all violence, then we're still opening ourselves up to trouble within our society and our children and our children's children will not have a safe environment in which to grow up. That's our, that's our job. That's the only task that we have is to ensure that our communities are safe. I thank God that we have law enforcement that's willing now to open up the door and have a dialogue that's going to help to level the field. What we did in this, we talked about some solutions that we see, possible solutions. Fortunately, we've been blessed because the door is open to talk with City Hall and law enforcement about uh, how we can work together in order to, to mend these ties and to make it a better place for everybody. So that's where we're at right now. Today was a great day. We had people from all over come together. We had, um, we had law enforcement that worked along with us in this. We marched, we sang, we prayed. We just had a great old time celebrating the life of Walter Scott and the legacy that's going to come about as a result of his death. From this day forward, if we do it right, if we don't drop the ball and just go back to sleep, if we get up and begin to work together with law enforcement in our city halls, in our communities throughout the land, respecting the feelings of each other instead of stonewalling those feelings, then we can come together and create that society that we want to live in, that society that was promised to us, that society that guarantees each man that life, that liberty, and that pursuit of happiness and equality for all as endowed by our Creator. That's all we want. It's not just us though, when I say that's all we want, it's all that our law enforcement officers want, it's all that our communities want, all these different organizations that I'm a part with, that's all we want is that everyone will have a fair chance at the American dream. And if we keep working at this thing the way we're going right now, unfortunately, because of that incident, the blessing is that the legacy that Walter Scott will have is that he helped the world to achieve, our, our nation to achieve that American dream. How's everybody doing this afternoon? All right. Good all right. Afternoon. I know that many of you are not all right this afternoon, so that's okay. That's understandable. And before I get started, I would like to give credit to the, the real leadership that brought me here today because you see, there's one, they have leadership that's only there doing high, pro, high profile cases that are chasing the cameras and and basically howling for the microphones and all of that, that's not that type of leadership. This type of leadership that we have here in Charleston are people who are there for the average Joes and the average Janes who the television cameras don't always pay attention to. So I'd like to hear some applause for the real leadership that we have in the city of Charleston.
Now, I'm a historian by profession, and that's important because you have to understand how things got to be the way they are before you can fix them. Because before a doctor can find a solution and cure for a sickness, he has to trace the roots of that malady. And so I'm just going to briefly do that and not take up a whole lot of your time by explaining a little something that most people do not know. You see, 500 years ago, there was no such thing on this human planet as race. People did not see themselves as such. You saw yourself as either a Frenchman or an Englishman or a German if you were in Europe. You saw yourself as a Fulani or an Igbo or a Mandingo in Africa. You saw yourself as someone from China, India, or Japan in Asia. Or you saw yourself as a Cherokee or a Mohawk or whatever in this particular continent in which we live. But during the time that this continent was being explored, they needed labor to work the land. They tried the American Indian at first. The American Indian did not, was not able to survive the diseases brought over. So therefore, there was a man by the name of Father Bartholomew Le Casa who came with Columbus on his third voyage. He said that instead of enslaving the Indian, let us use the people of Africa. And therefore, that's how we wound up over here. Now, having said that, in order to get people to, uh, to go along with this type of thing, a few things had to be done. First, there were a group of Europeans here called the indentured servants who were brought over here who had to work the land. But the plantation owners of this country realized something. These white indentured servants and these black slaves were getting way too chummy. Because, so they had to stop that because they understood if these black slaves and if these white indentured servants ever realized how much they were had in common, that would be the end of the plantation system in these United States. So they planted hatred in the seeds of the minds of the indentured servants. And therefore, that encouraged racial violence that existed for over the last 400 years. Here in Charleston, you had not only the Denmark Vesey revolt and the hanging of Vesey and his comrades, you had the Charleston race riots of 1876. People talk about Rosewood. You also had the Charleston race riot of 1919, where Isaac Doctor and William Brown were lynched right below Marion Square during that particular situation. So a lot of this was by design to keep the people on both sides from coming together and changing the system within the society. And once you understand that, you, make, you begin to break down these barriers and make this come together as a reality. But let me share this with you before I, before I leave, yield this to the next speaker. I used to take children to Selma, Alabama and Montgomery and Birmingham and all these places every year so they could meet the people who were still alive for the Civil Rights Movement because by the time they become old, all of those people will no longer be here. Let me say this. We spoke with a reverend at Holt Street Baptist Church. That was the church where Dr. King announced the, first bu announced the bus boycott on December 5th, 1955. And the pastor who was a little boy at the time was there. One of the young people on the trip asked him, Pastor, because of your experiences, do you hate white people? And his response was this. He said, back in the 1960s, you had, you had white people who were against us, like the Klan and the governor of Alabama, but you also had white people like Viola Uzo and many others who came down from the north who were killed trying to help us. At the same time, you had blacks who were for us, but at the same time, you had African Americans who ran back to the Klan and ran back to the police and were secretly against us. So he made something that's clear that I want to make clear to all of you. He said, our struggle is not one of black versus white. It's about good versus evil. Thank you. Take my
came straight down here. Um, just because I'm just tired of what's going on, like in the community. Um, the fact that a police officer took my brother's life and he was unarmed, and he was actually at his job. He was uh, servicing a vehicle at his job. And uh, the police came to serve him a warrant and um, he tried to get away, he was scared, he tried to get away. And uh, they said that he tried to run him over, so they killed him. But uh, you know, witnesses say that he crashed into the curb and they just opened fire and killed him. So uh, I honestly feel like <clears throat> when the whole thing happened, I didn't understand you know, why, why my brother, why my family. Um, but as the story started to unfold and I started to live it, I realized that it was God's will, um, that God chose my brother for change. Um, so I'm here today to, 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 to be here to help the community. I live in Atlanta. I came out here to, to, to be here, do whatever I can. Um, I'm saddened by what's going on in our nation, and it's ridiculous. We all got to come together, stand up. And, um, you know, I don't believe in violence or anything like that. I believe in nonviolence, just coming together as a community. I actually feel like it should be way more people here today. Like, um, that's, that's very sad that there's not that many people here. Um, so I just want to say uh, we're, on the right, we're, we're on the right path. Um, thank God that there was a, a video able to show what happened to Walter Scott. I think that's a great um, step for change. Um, and I just, like I said, I just want to thank God for being here, being able to talk to you guys. And um, we got to stand up, man, because this guy, this, if this happened to me, this could happen to anybody. My name is TJ Thomas. Nicholas Thomas is my brother. He was shot and killed March 24th in Smyrna, Georgia by Officer Kenneth Owens. He was unarmed and at his job. I came down from Atlanta to tell my brother's story. I just happened to be the big man. We agreed to sell drugs together when we made the money, we split it down the middle. You got your share and I got mine, okay? But when you got caught, you looked for a way out. <clears throat> you didn't want to go to time, you didn't want to do time now. You don't, you don't want to go to jail for what your part and your role was in this crime. So what did you do? You did what this brother did. You told him. But you wasn't an innocent bystander like that brother was. You was a part of the crime. So you snitched. That's the word. That's what you did. That's why I said I got proof. And that's why I stand before you today and tell you about the story here, because I was switched on. And that was the best thing they did for me. They rented their community of a drug dealer. They got me out. And that's what y'all need to do. When y'all see crimes happen that you don't have nothing to do with, you don't have no participation in the crime, you are not snitching. The dudes who told on me was part of the crime, so they snitched. But if you had nothing to do with this and you see me selling drugs and you tell, you're not snitching. Because we just proved that on this guy telling on the police officer. The confusion was set so deep in our community. Because we, I, I came from New York. But it was set so deep in our community that what we did to protect ourselves was everyone who was in this book, I tried to put the intimidation down on by making them understand that telling if we get caught, it's wrong. So we came up with the word snitch. If you're telling you wrong, snitch. And it was so effective in the underworld amongst criminals that we said, hey, why not let's try it on some bits of videos. Let's try not to get Erica, our cops would say, Erica, you better not tell, or you snitch it. If you see a crime, don't say that. You snitch it. And we were like, it worked with dogs, it worked with criminals. Why not let's try it on a civilian? And we tried it, and it worked. So we kept using that word, snitch, 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 to the community, kind of break it like a plant. You put it in the ground, you pour water on it, you give it something, and it grows. It grows, we never believed it. But this is the catch to it. We are so quick, the, the thugs, I'm no longer part of that, so let me move on this side right here. <laughs> we, are quick to say that snitching is wrong. But catch this, because I've been there. You ain't been there told me, Lewis. You ain't, I, I, I knew. I knew. I don't want to bring you up. <laughs> but we look at the integrity of that, all of us, and the penitentiary is full of snitching. Everyone in the most, not everyone, the majority of the people in the penitentiary are snitching. 
There's only two ways. There was an attorney in here a few seconds ago. There's only two ways you can get time like I did. Only two ways. The only way you can get up there right now is to walk up the step or catch an elevator. Those are the only two ways. Unless you're Superman, you just die up here. But there's only two ways you can get up those steps. And that's through the steps. Upstairs, that's through the steps or the elevator. There's only two ways you can get time in the bed. Now y'all should be recording this. There's only two ways you can get time in the bed. I'm going to say it one more time. The only way you can get up the is through the step, that's one way, and the elevator. That's the only two ways. Okay? There's only two ways you can get time in the bed. Okay? That's if you go to jury trial, like I did, and lose, because I lost. Two ways. Or, or, you tell on someone. They call it a proper agreement. Well, you switch on one of the people who was involved in the crime with you. So it's only two ways. So the majority of these people out here on the street now talking about stop snitching. You see all these shirts and Jay, all these rappers singing about it? They're snitching. Because when they went to federal break, they don't have this to prove it. What they got is a proper agreement where they went in and told on someone for a reduced sentence. So the same people who's telling you to stop snitching are snitching. For some here, they've been a, a part of, 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 of the club that the Scott family joined last week that they never wished that they would have joined, never wanted to join, same club none of us want to be a part of. Because of the fact that we are transitioning into our third segment of, of violence, and I really appreciate everybody that's been, that's patiently waited and have not left because we need y'all to convey this message. Marvin conveyed this message many, many years ago, 43, 44 years ago now. Mothers, mothers, there's too many of you crying. You think these ladies that spoke today have not cried and are not still crying? I'm crying. I'm crying listening to their story. I never really will understand their pain unless fill in the blank. The one here, fill in the blank. Mm. Brothers, brothers, there's far too many of you dying. You know we got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Mm. All around the nation, black mothers and fathers are crying over their dead children who have been gunned down for a reason that really makes no sense at all. The only crime that they've committed was being, being young and black in America. And many have been gunned down by the same people who our taxpayer dollars pay to serve and to protect. Last year, the officer-involved shooting of Michael Brown kind of started more awareness in the aftermath of the Trayvon Martin. But we had an incident here that happened not long before Michael Brown's incident that some feel like it just got pushed by the wayside. In the absence of AC, I'm holding the fort down today.
And I'm here today at the Tech Up Step Up program. It has been wonderful and very excited to be here and can't wait for our future event. I am a one woman show. I am my own business owner. I work for myself. I am also an author. Here I have my book called I Heard Chicago Crying that I just published and has been released for 2015. It's against the gun violence and hate crimes taking place in our communities. And this is a piece of me and my heart that I'm sharing with our community so that we can do something to make this change. Most importantly, to spread hope and remind us that there is hope for a change. I am also someone who supports a women's support network called Driven that stands for Divine, Respectable, Innovative, Vibrant, and empowering women. I'm here to uplift them in every way that I can, support their businesses freely, and on August 2nd, we will be having a Low Country Women's Empowerment Conference to do just that and celebrate women in general. I am very excited and can't wait for that to happen. I just want to say thank you so much, Elder Carly Town, for inviting me to this event. I'm happy to be at Tech Up Step Up. I encourage everyone and anybody that can be here to come out and enjoy this event and connect with the community. It is wonderful. It's powerful. You can also check it out on Facebook and take a look for yourself. Come out and try it. Bring your young ones and the elder ones out to the community here. And it's located here right in North Charleston. Hi, I'm Skip Michael. I'm the current president of the Union Heights Community Council. Union Heights Council includes Union Heights, Howard Heights, and Windsor subdivisions. I'm here today uh, to support Elder Carly Town in the Step Up, Tech Up program that she's establishing here in Union Heights. I invite the members of all the communities to stop by and take advantage of this very worthwhile program. Hi, I'm Elder Carly Town with AC Funtime Superstar and the Baby Boomers, and we at the Tech Up Step Up program, and we at the Calvary Senior Citizen Building, and we have some historical people in here, and, and I want you to tell me a little bit about who these people are. I know some of them, but I don't know all of them. Okay, this is Representative Tobias Gatson, and here we have the late Lillian Chapman. Lillian Chapman was a staunch supporter of the community, an original member of the Community Association, 
The former Calvary Church was right on this spot and she was one of the leading members of the church. Picture of Reverend McLean's daughter, another volunteer in the community. Here, Mr. Grant. Mr. Grant takes care of these buildings and the church buildings and helps out people throughout the community all the time. Members of the McLean clan. This is my buddy, Ed McLean. Ed is a true hero of the community. Ed pastored at Calvary Church for a number of years. Ed continuously serves the community. He currently is a member of the Charleston Airport Authority, and he is a leader in this community, even though he's retired. We're going to go for some honey, and we're going over to Project Love, and we got some exciting, exciting entertainment for you. I come by to tell you today, Love and it was real exciting. We had a DJ there, it was out of this world. He's from he's an international DJ, and guess what? I got him here today. I had a dude. Hey, how you doing today? I'm DJ Nenju with Spitfire International. I'm here with Tech Up Step Up, you know, representing the community as a community leader. You know, um, I'm reaching out to all my youths and all my elderlies out there, you know, to do what I do. You know, I um, definitely want to show you, you know, how you could be a community leader as well, too. You know, so hey, I'm international, by the way, and, you know, if you want more information on me, you could go to Google and type in DJ space N-Y-N-J-A-H, or you could hit me directly on my YouTube channel, which is the same spelling, or hit me on my Facebook. My business line is 843-478-1186. So contact me for any more further information. I can help you do what I do and become successful and be a great community leader. You go, boy. We have a beautiful sister here. She's natural, she's wonderful, and she travels. Matter of fact, she's a travel agent. Let her tell you a little bit about her travel agency. 
Well, I first want to thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. I have to give a huge shout out to Tech Up Step Up. It is so amazing what y'all are doing in the community. And me, myself, I'm a community leader as well. I love sharing information. And I'm pretty sure there's so many people out there that travel and want to learn more about being a possible travel agent. I would love to share more information with you because it's people coming all around the world traveling. So if you want more information, feel Feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. My name is Katrina with the C Williams. That's Katrina with the C Williams on Facebook. Yes. And honestly, I love being at the Gospel Fest. It was amazing last Sunday. But I, I thank you so much for your time and, and allowing me to be able to share my information today. Thank you so much. On the board. From coast to coast, one of the most baddest DJ in the low country. I say she's coast to coast. Now had her favorite spot in the low country. Check her out on Facebook. Hey, and trust me, she will be there. And you got my word on that. Policia Ish Gladden. Step Up Program. Okay. It's called Tech Up Step Up. All right. And, you and this program is about exchange. It's about <laughs> traditional uh, quilting and doll making and painting by the elders and then the young people come and bring their art also and plus they actually come and exchange knowledge. Good afternoon my name is J.A. Moore and I'm here attending Step Up Tech Up. This is a great program here in the Charleston area. I encourage each and every one of you to get involved uh, and talking about getting involved I'm here today uh, to speak really quickly about Clifford yeah. Smith. Clifford yeah. Smith is running for mayor of North Charleston, South Carolina. And it's very important that we get involved, that we register to vote before October the 3rd. Before October the 3rd, we need to register to vote, and we need to vote on November the 3rd. Clifford Smith is asking for your support. I'm supporting him wholeheartedly. If you want to learn more about the campaign, please uh, visit the website at www.cliffordsmithformayor.com. But once again, I'm encouraging each and every one of you to get involved with Step Up Tech Up. Thank you very much. This is AC. If you've got Comcast C2, tune in every Friday night at 12.30 and again Saturday morning at 9.30 for the AC Funtime Television Show. If you have talent and would love to be on the show, contact Arthur Chisholm, 843-200-4487 or Elder Carlingtown, 843-735-2189. Look here. Are you having an event? Gospel or R&B? Need a band? A DJ or videographer? Contact Arthur Chisholm, Facebook. Or Elder Carlingtown on Facebook. Please subscribe to AC Funtime TV on YouTube. AC Funtime, Comcast C2, 12.30 Friday night, 9.30 Saturday morning. Be In the absence of AC, I'm holding the fort down today. We're going to go for some honey and we're going over to Project Love and we got some exciting, exciting entertainment for you.
things that we do, we cover everything. We, it's holistic. So Vicki, tell me a little bit about what your program that you're talking about, you was telling me about early. Okay, I'm the founder of the MKS Foundation, which was founded in honor of my mother that died from HIV, AIDS. And we just want to spread the message and get all of our young people involved in the eradication of the HIV and AIDS. That was some powerful information. And we thank you. And make sure that you get in touch with Vicki Jones so that you can find out more about her foundation. And now, we hope that you enjoyed our show today. We took you out to Project Love. We brought you to Cal Senior Citizen Center. And we gave you a lot of information, stuff that you can use. So tune in next week and you'll hear more from AC, Funtime, Superstar, and the Baby Boons. We always bring it to you. And the Lord God is your child. As you can see, we are all over the low country. We are now in Hampton Park. If you want to be a guest on the show, call us at 843-200-4487. If you've got talent, you need to email author.chism at at and You can go to Facebook and Facebook Arthur Chisholm. And that's Arthur Chisholm. He'll be riding a white horse. Or you can visit us at www.tifm.ws. <laughs>
Listen, this ain't gonna minister to somebody unless you've been through some things in your life. How many people been through some situations that had the potential to kill you, but you're still alive? I'm so glad to be here. So glad to be here. If you're glad to have the activity of your limbs, nobody has to roll you out here, but you got your feet and you got your hands. I want you to say, I'm so glad to be here. Tell me, 